SOLIDWORKS training and today's topic is product data management PDM and PhotoWorks what do you mean by PDM product data management what do you do with PDM and everyone will have the question what is the link between product lifecycle management and product data management SOLIDWORKS workgroup vault admin is specifically designed for the small workgroup engineering the people who is the design department of maximum 500 or 600 people and they are involving in a design project and they want to work in a collaborative environment for them this is the preferable data management software and moreover it is easy to deploy and easy to learn and easy to understand that's why many companies use SOLIDWORKS for product data management. There are different terms and uh, there are different concepts you should understand behind this SOLIDWORKS PDM. Before that, let us understand how and where we want to install PDM. The installation of uh, SOLIDWORKS Workgroup Vault Admin and uh, PDM Server is given clearly with images in catcenter.org website please refer for, for that image please refer that page to understand how this can be installed without proper installation you cannot understand this training so please go and do it and then start to learn this now let us understand how to install the softwares in the machine and uh, which process is followed in the companies and what we are going to do right now with this PDM this is the typical installation of PDM server in a project if you look this first slide just this first, first flow chart project leader and we have four engineers working under this project it is not required everyone should be in the same location or it is not required everyone should be in different location it is only it is only a collaborative what we are doing here so the project leader can be anywhere situated he may be Mumbai or he may be at Pune or he may be at Delhi or he may be Chennai and you will be at any of the location in India or it may be in abroad so typically how will you install this software and how these workgroup engineering can use this for their data management as i told project leader can sit anywhere so that project leader machine if you see that system what he is using he will install solidworks workgroup vault admin and client application and also pdm server these three he will install it in his machine but if you think about the engineers which we call as client here they will have SOLIDWORKS and client application this is the typical installation in a company when you want to make a data management but as far as our training institute since everyone is not having server based applications server based methodology we can go with this standalone method means you will install all this application in one single machine that is in my laptop I'm going to install SOLIDWORKS SOLIDWORKS workgroup vault admin client application and PDM server and we are going to log in as engineer 1 engineer 2 3 and 4 so the thing here you need to be clear where and how to install this four applications SOLIDWORKS vault admin client and pdm server please refer carefully each and every steps given in the org site for installing solidworks once you understand this then you will have a clear idea about why we want to install this all in one machine and uh, how can we manage this data effectively next let us understand the different different terms and definitions for the uh, PDM we, we said about 
uh, name called as PDM server. We said client application and uh, we are going to see user also. So what, what is exactly this server, client and user? Server is a computer that handles data, request, email, file transfer and the other network services from other computers. Client. A client is an application or system that accesses remote service on another computer called server by way of network. And user. A user is a person who uses computer or internet services to log on into an account. And a user is required to authenticate him with a password or other credentials for the purpose of security, accounting, logging and resource management. Now we need to understand where this is, where the server is, which application will act as server and which is client and which is user. To open the application, now I'll cancel this. To open this application, go to start. If you installed properly using all the steps given in the overview side, so you will be getting this icon here. Means you can go inside and you can from here you can choose SolidWorks and here you can see this application will be installed and select this this is the vault admin application here i will say the default username and password is pdm w admin and here the vault computer if you are logging into the server machine you have to enter the server machine name but here i'm going to use my same my laptop so i enter mcat02 or it can be localhost anything it can be done when you do with the same machine i'll use login now this is the vault admin application. So this will manage the creation of users. We are we are saying about users here. And this is this is where you can see you will be able to understand the different users. So only these people will have the access to check in the document or to check out the document or to under or to modify the projects given there. And client application, if you go into solid, if you open SolidWorks, you have to go to tools, add-ins. From here, you can see SolidWorks Workgroup PDM 2009. This should be activated. If you activate in this application, you can see, I will pin this. Uh, right now, it is login. I will log out. Now, if you log in this, you can see this is what we call as client application. And this is what we are defining here server client user so the server right now my c drive will act as a server and uh, client application is this is the client application and user is when you go to the workroom vault admin so again i will do the password i will save the password this is this is the this is the one application which will handles all the data which should be having read write access which should be having different control levels everything will be done by this application and this is what all about server client and user the person who is interested to learn pdm they should be very clear about this point then only they will be able to understand why we are using different applications to check in the documents and you should understand the difference between client server and also separate software called as SOLIDWORKS what is the link between these three and why we are using it for data management the next slide it says a brief about product data management this product data management application is a software which runs inside the SOLIDWORKS environment or we can run as a standalone application which means the project leader that, that is uh, we right now we are doing here we can have only this uh, PDM application workgroup vault application to create or to apply some uh, conditions and uh, access for the user so it can run inside SOLIDWORKS or it can run as a standalone application and the major advantages of PDM is control revisions and manage CAD project. We have 10 or 20 different projects. Every time we, we do number of changes. 
every changes we cannot track and we cannot say with different name date and time everything so here using this pdm solution you can control the different revisions and also the cat projects effectively and i said every user is authenticated with username and password so without username and password they cannot retrieve the data and that's why we, we, we call this protecting the project's file with simple and complete security and we are spending very less time in organizing data you will understand when we are doing different type of uh, activities in this pdm and of course if you do all this definitely productivity will be improved and uh, due to the teamwork you will have a little bit of task uh, done in short duration where we can say teamwork is enhanced and we can say we are doing in a collaborative environment and next these are the major keystones of pdm first one this four points you should not forget first point searching and sorting files change control and sharing secure vaulting and revision tracking references i'll make this to be a little bit clear searching and sorting as uh, when you have 10000 parts you can search from the vault as simple as possible and you can sort it as simple as possible change control and sharing you can give access for a user to have control on the component or the design for one month and once you complete the project you can share the same data for other where the first one will not have the access and that's what we are saying change control and sharing secure vaulting as you know without having username password you cannot read the data that's why we are saying secure vaulting and also revision to have multiple uh, changes we call as revision that is manageable here tracking references when you check check in any one document when you when you copy this document into the vault that we call as server machine if you check in one assembly automatically all the parts which is referred with that assembly everything will be check in inside and that we call as tracking reference and reference to track both down and up which means if you input part it will show where this part is used as reference in the other assembly this is the advantages you have with pdm and what exactly this uh, workgroup vault pdm we are seeing this application what exactly this uh, workgroup vault pdm will do it's a data management solution offering a fully integrator easy to deploy and this is uh, used for work collaboration controlling documents searching for documents and uh, determining the document relationships check in check out of documents from a vault automated revision control so these are the uh, different task done by work group vault admin so he is the one but that is this application will be handled by the project leader he is the one who will say or who will say uh, read write access will be for engineer 1 and read write access will be for design engineer and read write access for customer he is the one will will control all this and he will use this application to give different access and to track the diff different revision levels and that is the use of workgroup vault admin and this application will be installed on the server machine but as of now we don't have server machine we are going to use the same laptop uh, c drive that is uh, this laptop will be acting as a server so we are installed more four application in the same software and we are going to see the difference and these are some of the basic philosophy of uh, pdm vault admin files are stored in the vault so where this vault is vault you can see in the c drive when install you will be able to see this vault this is where all the files will be saved and this will act as a server right now that file where you install that is the application where you install using pdm server which the which drive using that drive will be act as a server if you install using server machine and that will be the uh, whole whole thing which has all the projects all the models in that server and the first point is files are stored in the vault users have access to the vault users check out and open files from the vault all required files are copied to the users local workspace uh, if you if you look at this point 
uh, what we are trying to say here is when you check out any drawing from the server means we have this application now we'll go and log in here if i check in any document by opening like this this, this is how we will check out the document from the server when you do this you will have one more local copy creator in your local machine if you are checking out the document from the server you will have a local workspace local copy in the workspace and uh, that is why you can see you will be getting the maximum speed to work and to check in the document also since once you complete all the operation and you will check it check into the vault you can avoid the maximum traffic happening at the network and uh, when users are finished with the files the check-in changes and they may release ownership and delete the local files or both this is one more advantage you have with solidworks vault pdm vault admin and next these are the once again giving clarity on the vault and vault admin tool vault is a directory where documents are stored in project directories here i was saying c drive here vault data and projects here you can see whatever you are doing everything will be saved with the local copy this is, this is what we call as server and in that servers in this folder everything will be so that is what it said here vault is a directory usually on a server where documents are stored in project directories vault admin tool this one vault admin tool it provides access for the pdm works group administrator to set up the system he will use the tool to create users projects he says create users projects and revisions and life cycle schemes and also establishes global setting that affect all users and next pdm client pdm client it is this is what the pdm client i will log out here this is the pdm client and what is the use of this pdm client client software is used generally by the users either inside solidworks or as a part of solidworks explorer to access pdm vault admin functions the client software is used to check in documents in and out increment revisions view informations and create reports and next this is very important understanding the color when you look this application if i log in you can see here every part this is already we have a set of projects then here you can see there are different colors blue uh, with uh, white mark and here you can see we have cyan color we have magenta color what exactly different colors will make meaning one is white line through a blue circle the document does not exist in the vault that is what it is showing here this document does not exist in the vault white upward arrow in a green color circle the local view document is newer than the document in the vault white downward arrow in a red circle the local view document is older than the document in the vault white equals sign in a gray scale the local view document is equal to the document in the vault white star in a green circle this is a new document or new document reference document name in orange the documents is ready is read only and document name is document name is read only and the next document name in bold the document has changed since it was last saved these are the important things you should understand about the color display of the part and if the user is not clear about this definitely he will not able to do the different management task with the product data and which is a most essential one for every user to understand the color since he will not have the idea why this color is showing here for this component and this is one more advantage we have here solidworks explorer this this comes with solidworks you can see here solidworks application sorry one second i'm opening it solidworks okay i'll click okay open go to solidworks 2009 here we have solidworks explorer 
this is one more uh, application which is uh, designed you to perform the operations such as renaming replacing and copying solidworks files this is uh, this is same like it works like uh, desktop searching but this is one more enhancement with uh, compared to that you can see here whatever the file you move here you can see accordingly it will show you the icons if i go here and if i say i would like to see this one you can see so similarly if you go to the uh, file directories where you have saved the documents that you can see dynamically here and you can change according to your need we'll go to solidworks training where i saved my documents here slide bracket you can see here you'll be able to see the part showing here you can right click and you can say pack and go rename replace and apart from that you can also check in the document if it is not check in you can check in the document using this vault okay and this is what all about file explorer once again this you can use it for uh, both check in and also for you can see the uh, or what are the operation you can do with solidworks it is given in the slide file management tool designed to help you perform tasks such as renaming replacing copying solidworks file you can show documents reference pdm workgroup can be used through solidworks explorer when solidworks is not installed too and let us see the brief introduction to these points product data management introduction to pdm lan wan server client user advantage of using pdm and this slide is given for the user to understand what is the first class you should start before he get into the pdm here to make them understand these points very clear six points login to account vault settings creating a new user and group setting up revisions everything whatever it may be given here the six point it should be made clear and then he can proceed with the class and these are the different topics we are going to discuss product data management topics uh, the same other topics and we are going to have different objectives covered in each slide let's see this each steps in detail as we discussed earlier the trainer should be giving clarity on this six point and he should be able to explain pdm lan wan server client user admication with a flow chart or it may be block diagram and he should be able to understand how it is a customer should be able to understand how this prod pdm can be implemented in their projects and you should have, you should make them understand briefly about vault settings logging into vault and also setting up revision schemes still it is not it is not essential for everyone to start with this one but they have to understand they should have an overview on this the six points before you start with the first class now the first topic is graphical user interface of vault admin as we know this is the vault admin application we have totally 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 we have 10 tabs here and each tab is used to give different type of settings first one will decide the global settings and this is used to create users and group and this this will help us to streamline the projects setting up revision schemes this is especially useful for drafting purpose in drawing you can make a table of revisions define uh, defining projects and uh, rewrite access different project permissions as seen in this tab and designing life cycle status and uh, project properties you can assign properties for specific part which is checking into this vault which is going into the server and standard libraries and at last using triggers you can set some notifications this is this is the brief about graphical user interface and to log on into local vault machine or to log on into local server the same process when you go and choose the application here you need to enter the vault computer name where you had installed the software vault 
if it is installed in your same machine you can enter your machine name or you can enter local host if it is server machine you can you should enter the vault computer name that is the server machine name and choosing the client application as we told earlier you can go, you should go to tools add-ins and this application should be checked in if you if it's if you choose this uh, application you'll be able to see the client application local view and vault view in this solidworks environment this we called as uh, local view and this we called as vault view using vault view you will understand the 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 parts which is checking into the vault and this will once again if this is helpful once again to drag and open whatever the components or the assembly you will use for design purpose and next customizing vault view you can customize vault view by right click on this tab go to here you can see we have a display with names or you can go to solidworks or group pdm options here you can choose what you should be able to see here which one you are you should, you should be able to see here references vault command defaults folders labels and here you can see labels right now i'll apply status and click apply you can see accordingly you will see the status okay here it is showing the error but i'm saying this uh, this this is how you can use to display the solidworks uh, vault view display and now the objective is you should know how to create users groups and new projects let's see how we can do this and later let's see how we can give read write access to these projects to check in into this application we have to get into the icon select this username pdmw admin and password the same vault computer name login here users and groups when you open this as a initial first first application uh, if you've installed the first you can three initially you can see three users one is pdm w admin user underscore r and user underscore w by remove from here but as a default it will be there the password for other two will be pdm works and pdm admin will be same pdm w admin you want to create user select this new user to add additional users new user username i will make it as uh, raja if required you can enter password display name email everything you can enter i'll click as it is without anything click ok and the username i'll make it as uh, john click ok and new username i'll make it as uh, this one click ok and new user shinoch click ok so the similarly you can enter the different user names and you can create number of users but if you believe i want uh, all the users to be one group that means you have uh, you have to make the projects to come under one single group you can make a group here i'll make a new group here i'll make it as uh, whirlpool this they will be doing means uh, pdm admin and uh, john and raja will be the group which comes under whirlpool design and next i'll make it as uh, bell projects click ok and here Rizwan and Shinoj and PDMW admin that is the leader these three will have access this is how we can create new user and groups once you complete this to create new projects and to give access for this user and group get into the tab projects initially you will have a name sample but as of now i remove this but you will have a name with sample you can remove this or you can modify the same now i will create a new project here i will say um, design of mold 
I will same I will copy and paste which should be displayed here click OK here next analysis I'll copy structural analysis structural analysis so I'll copy and paste it here same description now we have two projects in design of mold I required this whirlpool should have read at access apply here when you select this one group you can see it, it shows with the small or w which means the dependent will uh, users will also have read it access and uh, structural analysis okay before that i will give s to apply changes and uh, structural analysis i will say build projects apply this is how you can create users groups and you, you can give read it access using this projects and the next topic is how to check in documents and understanding the dialog box where it opens and what it says now i will log out this and once again go and log in using any one of the user i will use pdm admin i will click ok or i will choose ok we will use john i will click ok and log in here now you can see the John which, which comes in a design of mold only that will be shown and one will be showing with the hidden view. Now I need to check it, check in some documents. I will use this uh, this assembly and I will open this uh, one single part and this I need to enter into this design of mold. This part has to be entered here. Uh, once you save this you can right click on this tab to get the command called as a separate toolbar solidworks workgroup pdm select this now here you will be able to see icon check in icon now you select this before that you select this project and get into this one icon now you can see we have selected only one single part automatically all the reference geometries all the different components is shown here but i don't require all these parts i require only fan to be checked in select this option check in and here what it says uh, check in but still okay i don't require assembly also i require only prop bushing check in here but it says once again assembly will also be included because it has the dependency now we have the uh, option of getting retain ownership that means if you uncheck this then the, that document will not have any order let's see about what is this just plainly check in here click ok now you can see the components which we said you can see here one assembly and below you have the component this is what we are checking now and once again i'll remove this and i'll say once again into check in then we'll understand the other concept behind it remove this once again I will open the component this is the prop bushing and this I want to check in here I'll go and uh, right click check in check in this document prop bushing check in here click OK now you can see the document is checked in and uh, when you are checking out checking here you can see some of the advantages you can enter i will check in here you can see retain or if i if i uncheck this and if i check in this then uh, you can see the display of name here what i will do i will right click here display name with the owner you can see you can see here there is no owner for this document once again you can right click and you can take ownership this is given if you if you don't like I mean you, you have completed the project and you want to re release the ownership so that the other can take the ownership to complete the remaining task. So when you check in this document you can say whether you want to retain ownership. If you use retain ownership and if you use delete co local copy from here the local copy will be deleted and you will be getting the ownership there. I will check in here. Ok. Now you will be able to see the view here. So John is a user, he has a name here and you can see it is related with 
magenta color with arrow mark and once you complete this you can once again remove this by right clicking this part and say say a delete rollback but this can be achieved that is when you right click you are able to see delete rollback that can be given access only from this global settings from here you can see delete rollback or two documents we are given all users if you if you say strictly no one then no one will be able to remove this administration administrators only only the a leader who is there only he can do it and here you can see administrator we are given access only to pdmw admin only he is the person can check in into this vault other they cannot do it and this is this is how you can create projects and you can check in the documents and uh, once you made any change let's say this uh, chamfer is having 0.5 i'll make it as uh, 0.25 and now once again i will check in this you can see right now it shows you as the a01 okay check in here and you can if you need you can enter number description notes whatever whatever you need you can enter here if required right now i'll check in as it is to this uh, project and now i will change this uh, 0.25 into 0.5 after uh mating with this component in the assembly i feel 0.5 is not enough 0.25 is not enough 0.5 is applicable i'll select this and i'll say changes and now if i check in the doctor once it is completed i can see it will show with the revision scheme as a02 and that's what all about uh, checking in documents and understanding checking documents dialog box and now let us understand how to set up revision schemes and uh, how this will be affected with the, with the with the settings in the global settings of vault admin dialog box now we are going to see the revision scheme here revision scheme we are using primary secondary that's why we're getting only a01 a02 but if you say i need one more separator you can give a hyphen here and you say 0 1 and this is not this i will make it as uh, small a a and small z z okay and this should be ranging and i will apply now i will once again close this document we will remove this document and i'll check in freshly here click ok now the whole assembly i will take it here now when i check in this whole assembly here you can see the revision scheme is starting with a01 aa check in all the documents and once you finished you will be able to see the modification whatever you do in the every every changes whatever you do in the modeling and that will be added at the different type of scheme let's see the example uh, here mating condition distance is given as how much yeah, the distance is uh, 12.7 i'll make it as 13 okay control b now let's go and check in this you can see here it starts with a01 ab so like like similarly it will go a c a d a f a g it will end with a z and once again b a b b b c so this is this is what the revision scheme we had set here but there are some conditions where we will say we don't require all this i would like to do in a different way where i should input the revision scheme as uh, first one as uh, design stage next uh, once design is completed manufacturing and once manufacturing completed inspection and once inspection is finished go for final dispatch you can also copy and paste the other text document into this window click apply here now let's see how this work out i will remove this whole assembly from here and uh, now i will select all this right click great rollback. back click ok 
Now I will open the part once again the same assembly. Now if I check in this document, I will open one single part. This part I would like to open. Only this I need to check in. I will select this, check in. Here the first revision is design stage. Check in inside. Once you completed, the second change I want to do, this whole circle pattern and it is saying how many so holes uh, I will go and edit this hole should be having uh, 13 holes click OK here once you come to 13 holes once again you check in here you can see the difference now the revision will be manufacturing similarly you can do number of changes every time it will start with uh, design stage manufacturing inspection and final dispatch once you finish the last revision level as final dispatch once again it will start with the design stage so don't forget this once you complete the last revision scheme as final dispatch the next revision scheme will once again start from the design stage and this is what all about using range listing ranging here I'll make it as uh, A to Z hyphen here 0 1 to 99 and uh, the sequential revisioning last revision type optional these are all this will this will work with the uh, okay sequential revisioning even though you you keep primary and secondary uh, I mean if I if I make this to be tertiary okay and if I use sequential revisioning okay here I'll make it as uh, A and Z so even though if you choose all this uh, primary secondary tertiary tertiary if you say sequential revisioning it will count as a01 a02 a03 in, in in such a way it will do it but if i uncheck this you will be able to use this options that is primary secondary and tertiary and last revisional type optional which means if you use this one then this will not be able to use you will not be able to use this tertiary one that's what we call as last revision type optional it is once again given in the book refer the book and understand this and the next point is understanding global setting let's see some of the settings here before that i will give you one more view on this once again sequential revisioning if you apply now if i check in any document i'll close this and now we will use one more compound to check in here i'll open this part now we have chosen the revision scheme as uh, sequential revisioning but still we are defined primary secondary tertiary if you check in this document you can see here it start with a0 you do number of revisions accordingly it will be counted and if you uncheck this i will make it as uh, a negative separate I mean separate i added i will make it this to be last revision type optional now if you look into this revision scheme definitely it should have all this three but if i choose if i if, if i select this last revision type optional and now if you check in you can see the difference here you will not be able to use the last uh, revision level and that's what we are choosing here last revision type optional and let us understand some of the wall settings here if you see the first option is vault lock this vault lock can be used only by the admin that is by the project leader or it can be used by any of the user you can make a setting in this wall setting but preferable you can leave as it is as a default what is given here and vault vault information here you can see where the vault data is inst installed whether it is in the same machine or it is in the different machine or which location it is installed keep extra copies of latest file if you choose keep extra copies of latest file then uh, you can see whatever we are doing here you will you will have one more copy in this directly you will have absolute not absolute um, projects and here you can see there is a file called as latest if i say i don't require this one and i will apply this 
you can see automatically the file will be removed now i will say once again keep extra copies and i'll apply you can see once again latest folder will be added this is what keep extra copy of latest file this will keep a copy of the product which you had checked into the vault hide project with no access here john doesn't have access to the second project so you don't want to show it you can select this and you can say apply refresh this you'll be able to see you will not be able to see the second project and force user login if i use this one and if i apply this when you check into document you are supposed to give both username and password without that you cannot enter into this application that's what we are saying force login user login allow revision bumping now whatever we do here it is uh, okay let's let, let's remove this and let's see what is revision bumping now i will check in this document into this uh, design of mold if you check in it is getting the revision as a01 i don't require this much that is the third tertiary i don't require copy and paste and i will use save password now i don't require the revision scheme should be uh, primary secondary since uh, i don't want to complicate this cancel this refresh now i'll go and uh, check in this still uh, we have defined it now applied yes okay even i will remove this one also refresh this and now check in this document now you can see revision a01 and now i will check in this document once i check in this document it will it will always start with a01 a02 a03 but instead i would like to make some difference this a01 should be z01 or e01 right click here go to allow bump revision here i can see bump revision you can specify what type of increment you need i need others and i will here i will say it should be f02 click ok here now i can say this is what we call we call as bump revision but once again you cannot get back into a02 once if you did the bump and once again you cannot regain it and that is what bump revision okay the remaining thing we will see one by one in each process we will also understand what is this uh, document properties if you see the document properties right click if you want to see document properties right click a product here go to document properties document information in this you will be able to see the document properties where it says about who created where it was created apart from that you can see number of information if you if you want to add as a property properties here revision number description if you double click this you are not able to add any description or number for this product since you don't have the permission here now if i choose allow change document properties now if i right click and go to the document information in this properties if i double click right now i can enter the i can enter and change the description whatever it is there and that's what we call as uh, allow change document properties and allow users to create sub projects when you create any projects you can see here when you're creating it new project you will have parent level you can create one more project under one uh, one project this you can do it from here or you can right click here and you can say create sub project and here you can enter the name plastic components consumer and i'll click okay here so this this process of creating sub project you are giving access using this command allow users of, to create sub project if i uncheck this you will not be able to see the on the right click you can see here you, you will not be able to see the option and this is what allow user to create sub project and uh, let's see each each thing in a different module let's go to the other topic understanding global settings now the next is creating sub project now we had seen the creating sub project in the last slide 
let us understand how to make bulk check-in of documents and copying deleting the project files and different topics under this objective let's see this in detail the next topic bulk check-in of documents as of now we had seen document check-in with one single document or if you check in one assembly the part which is referred with that everything will be checked into the vault but now there is a one more situation you are working in a company and uh, you have some subordinates and you have to check check in all the documents which is in your local desktop which is given by your subordinates so now you, you have the folder where it contains uh, nearly thousand parts you cannot open one by one and you cannot check in the part and that's why we need a, a solution to check in the bulk model let's see how we can do this go to solidworks workgroup environment and go to projects here we have bulk check-in i will use bulk check-in and from here you can choose where the folder is from where you want access and i'll go here now let's say tool wise and uh, i'll say add files to list now you can see the immediate check-in of all the documents with the new revision level and uh, the owner should be home as we were, uh, right now we are seeing we are we are not having any owner defined here but you can see it is in the project de uh, design of mold so obviously the person who is there with this project they will be having this access and apart from this you can say which project you want to modify you can so we can check from here and what is the revision level and uh, if you choose retain ownership you can see automatically the ownership will be assigned and uh, after selecting all this you say check in files and click ok here you would like to skip the rendering world yes now you can see the files will be nearly 14 files had check in here you can see the now you are the owner and you have all the files in one single stretch we are checking nearly 14 files into this vault this is this is all about bulk check-in and next let's see how can we copy delete archive your projects you want to delete the projects or you want to archive a project you can use this one delete i think you know if you select and if you say delete that project will be removed from this place so we will keep as it is when you are practicing you can try creating okay now let's see the, the same we can see right now itself i will make it as a d c is the project name and i made a display here now i want to remove it go and say delete project yes now i want to copy the project you can select copy and you can see which part you want to copy to the new project uh, name new new name it should be uh, vendor of vendor a underscore design of mold and from here which one you want to choose i want to choose not everything i want to choose only these many parts and copy project here the name with with i don't require any name i'll keep a copy here and i'll be able to see one more project is created under this uh, user with this name vendor a design of mold copy and that's what all about copying project and uh, if you think like i want to arch you means uh, what i will do i will go and say open this component and here we are going to do some modification what i will go to is fillet us i'll make this to be three and i will save and i will check in this document okay right now it is showing read only okay as it is read only we cannot use it right now I'll close this and I will check in check out this document because uh, we are in the uh, John as a user so we are not able to access this I will go and say switch vault user here I will use once again PDM admin 
okay enter the password now I will check out the component check out right now you can see it is not showing as read only now I will say the sketch cut should be modified I will make this uh, point one should be stretched here and uh, I will make changes and I will check in this document similarly I am doing other changes like I will change the color and uh, now I will check in this document and this base sketch here uh, this height this height I will make it as 0.25 and I will rebuild and I will save and I will check in this document once again so we have nearly three revisions here in four revisions when I check out this I want to arch you the second first and second I don't require the second and first to be retrieved by the user how can I arch you it go to arch you project which when cap you have I will use uh, not cap we are we are yeah cap screw cap screw I can check in this and I will say arch you here and cancel this and right now if you check out this part you can see you will not be able to get this too can see automatically this uh, this tab this button will be deactivated if you use a04 you can once again open it this is this is how you can archive a project once you archive you can go to restore and you can restore which comp which revision level you don't require and this is what archive copy delete the projects next let's see how can we copy the project permissions here you will be able to see a design of mold has uh, John PDM admin Raja has the access now I want to copy same to this uh, plastic components now we'll remove all this I will say this to be com this to be copied go to copy projects to where I want to copy these two plastic components and I'll click OK here now you can see if you select this automatically you can see the permission of design mold is given to plastic components but obviously if you make sub project that will have access but I'm giving an example how you can make a copy of project project permission since I said if you work in work group engineer definitely there will be 100 engineers so you cannot choose every time so you can copy and paste the permissions from one project to other project and you want to develop the same project we can copy this permission it will be easy for us the next uh, viewing the configurations viewing the configurations so uh, I will open this component and I will say check out In this component I would like to make some configurations so first one add configuration here I will say whole display okay and one is default now it is whole display I will hide all these holes suppress this hole suppress once you complete this I will make it this to be the hold um, so this to be the default one okay this to be the uh, whole display configuration now I'll go to default one and I will say unsuppressed yeah it is unsuppressed way once again whole display you can see it is in the this whole display now let's let us save this and uh, check in this document close this document now if you open this you can see okay not opening right click here uh, preview window here you can see a01 with holes a02 without holes this is how we can view the sorry not revision uh, configuration default without hole display I given the name as whole display but we are hiding the holes this is how you can use the configuration to view before you opening it so once again you have the advantage which configuration 
is there in the part and uh, which one you require to open it and understanding the document information we had seen already how to change the properties there let's we'll see one more time right click document information here you'll be able to see who is the owner how many what is the last division level properties history notes and references if you go you will be able to see the the component which is uh, depending on this assembly where it is used it is used only in this assembly you did it, it, it has any attachment did it has any it has any configuration preview of the picture and view so everything you will be able to see here in this uh, document information and apart from this you can see the e-drawing application is uh, installed as a default which is easy for us to send this document once again using this print send and you can also mark some uh, markups also here stop this and make a markup here okay these are the different uh, advantage you have with document information the next how to delete rollback delete rollback is uh, is achieved only when you say this administrator will have delete rollback by all users go here and choose this uh, part right click you will have delete and roll back if you use delete you can see the component will be removed but i don't require it should be removed it should be roll back it means right click roll back here roll back i need to roll back this a042 a02 and click ok here and select it ok here now if i select and check out you will be able to see only two revision level this is what roll back so delete roll back but this should be this this can be accept accessed assessed by using the setup in the global wall settings and let's see how can we attach a non solid works document now i have a word document or i have an uh, pptx that is a slide i will use this one and i will just will go and leave on this design mold or you can leave on this tool wise you can see it is asking do you wish to add this document attachment yes and check in this document and this, this is how you can uh, understand even the other external file you can check in and uh, the great advantage is when you check in this document when you check out this document it will open in the respective software so you can check in or you can keep the track data of even answers pro e or any other or quotation for the component everything you can check in, in one project because you have the advantage of checking the non solidworks document and when you open check out once again it will be opened in the respective software and this is the advantage you have with pdm the next slide we are going to understand some of the settings under global wall settings and uh, bump revision we had seen already knowing about search tab revision table life cycle status properties assigning standard libraries about triggers let's see each topic in detail now let's see the global settings here i will say allow the user to rename if i uncheck this what you, what you cannot do is uh, if i go and say this project has to be renamed i'll select f2 right click rename what it says uh, allow users where we check this uh, allow documents allow users to rename documents in the vault now we uncheck this so if i select press and if i select this and if i say f2 if i say i don't require this copy and enter now you can see document name is already okay i will once again make a changes for this refresh now we had removed the option of renaming it okay now we'll go and say this should be cap screw until you can see you're not able to author you you're not authorized to rename this 
to achieve this go to check this option and now if I say this should be renamed I will remove this and here it should make this one now you can see it can rename this similarly you can save uh, log information go to save and you can save in the respective folder and now if you see that you will be able to see the log list whatever you started from morning till evening how, what is the information you had initialized the server or you, you, you can read this you can understand what it says this is the uh, small log list what are the process done in this server and next I would like to show you close all this folder this slide we have search tab this search tab required one more application called as Microsoft indexing service if you installed it this will be inactive otherwise you will not be able to build a catalog this catalog building will help us to streamline all the parts with a specific a specific process where you can retry the component by searching in a big history as of now we cannot see the difference because we have only less number of parts whatever we do here we cannot see a big difference but once once you en enable this indexing service then it will help us to search the document as soon as possible and next we have revision table let's see what about this revision table now I had activated revision table now what I will do I will open a component from here and we will make a component from here I'll say eccentric open check out this and from here I'm going to do the drawing for this component click OK and I'll place this uh, component here front I have this view and also this view after doing this now I would like to say this should be shading okay and once I complete this I would like to insert the model items that is dimensions for this entire model and once I complete this uh, I will place it here it should be located on this area and uh, now go to insert okay first we will save this we will save in the respective folder now go to insert table we have revision table click ok here and you can see the revision table now what, what I will do here is I will check in this document once it complete I will check in this document check in this document into the vault the same project check in and here you can see it is referred with that and now let's check in this one now you can see the table will be shown with a01 now what I will do I will say this sh should be in wireframe and I need other information so what I will do I will go and do a sectional view on this part sectional view create a profile from here to here and I'll use sectional view and this view should be aligned means I will break the alignment and I'll place the section view here now once again if I check out check in this you can see one more row will be added here and this is what we are setting up here enable revision table and the revision level should be at which level primary secondary or tertiary now it says, it, it says only visible three rows if you, if you say three rows and now you are doing one more uh, changes here this should be in uh, hidden mode and when you check in this one it goes to A03 and once you complete third revision level and right now you are saying this should be once again in the shaded and once if you check in you can see A01 will be removed automatically from this list if you check in it will show only starting from A02, A03, A04 and especially with this uh, drafting environment 
A revision table is very important since you do lot of changes and that changes has to be exactly shown in the table format how many revision level you did and what is the date you had modified it and who uploaded it. And this can be shown with a list using revision table and that's what we are doing with revision table. And next we are going to see assigning lifecycle status. Let's see this topic in detail. Let's see the other topics. The first topic is creating lifecycle status. Now when you decided to understand lifecycle status, the first thing you need to do is go to projects and say everyone is having access for the all the projects. This will help us to understand the process easily and moreover it is only for the like this life cycle status assigned for an user group who has access for the all the projects so that they can understand it first initially and they can implement according to their need. Uh, I don't require this project. Now we have design of mold who has all the access structural analysis have all the access. Go to the life cycle and here uh, enable the first option second option and I had typed status like this typing from here. I had manufacturing like this I had typed some of the status I don't require this last one I will use the existing three modeling analysis and motion simulation now under modeling I would like to say if I use the status as modeling I would like to say it should be uh, the user John and here I will apply now here once again we need to say for all this you should have the access apply and for analysis we should require all the access and also for motion simulation we should require all the access okay so modeling you will have change the document owner to John and next uh, analysis it, it says the if the analysis status is selected the second revision level will go to the status as motion simulation which means the motion simulation has the uh, owner uh, which means motion simulation if I say that should be the owner Raja and so if, if you say motion simulation okay if you if you do this analysis as a life cycle status the second revision level will go to the document owner as Raja and motion simulation once again I will say this to be the third revision if you do using the status it will go to Shinoj. Okay, so understand this first modeling life cycle status. You can see first tab it, it is selected as John, and second, you can see it is chosen as motion simulation, and third, you can see Shinoj, and here it has chosen as modeling. Uh, okay, modeling we don't require, we can say none. So if I say none, automatically you can see here if it is chosen as modeling, modeling as you know. Uh, the user is John so if you say modeling it will automatically make a owner as John then let's see how we can do this I will close the documents I will take I will remove all this we can use a fresh document to understand this and all this part I should remove delete own children everything Now editor everything and also this is a different user's uh, document so I cannot remove this. I will open a document from here. Let's see how we can do this. From here I will take this, no not this one. I will use uJoint. From here I will take this bracket. Check in this here. Okay, I will check in this document into this. Before uh, enabling this life cycle status, you need to enable from here. If you enable this, then you will be able to apply the status. Okay, now we have three different life cycle status and we are assigned the rules for it. Let's see how we can apply this. Remember, you should give access here and also from this project tab, we have to give all the access. Now I will select this and I will check in this document and here the life cycle status is modeling. But what is the uh, login we are doing here? PDM W admin. 
but here you can see if I say life cycle that is modeling it will say the owner will be John okay but as of now you can see we are logged in using PDM AW admin so if you check in the document then he will be the owner for that but when I say check in this document using uh, modeling as the status life cycle status now you can see the document will be given with the name as John now the second step is uh, I will go to analysis okay and uh, let's see how this work out I'll remove this document okay right click okay here we cannot remove it since it is in the different user you have to go here I'll close this once again I'll open one more part and this part we are going to understand about uh, analysis that is assigning the second rule I will check in this document into PDM admin we are in the PDM admin user I will make this uh, status to be analysis here analysis and check in this document now you can see the user right now it is PDM W admin but here what is the status the second revision level should go to motion simulation but motion simulation once again it will change uh, okay let's see what is that motion simulation uh, go to the motion simulation okay right now I'll close this I will check in the component check out what it said here does uh, the second the other document revisions now we we will do some modification here like uh, I will apply a filler on this face now I will check in this document using analysis a status and I'll check in this now you can see right now yoke female part doesn't have any ownership since we had given this uh, analysis so if you see in motion simulation it doesn't have any owner okay but when I say analysis motion simulation motion simulation the owner should be this one let's see how will how what are the change we will get here I'll remove this document now we cannot remove it so first I will take the ownership and now I can remove this now once again I will check in this document into design of mold and I will say this status is uh, analysis checking the document now PDMW admin I will remove this fillet and I will check in this using same analysis and right now you check in this document now you can see the owner has changed to RIS1 this is what we had given here let's see how this motion simulation will work out for the third rule now I will close this document I will open one more new part in this part I would like to check in inside this design of mold check in and here I will say status should be motion simulation check in the document in motion simulation the rule is set for the third level we are checking here now I will open this document we had said here clearly in motion simulation the document owner will be RIS1 so once you check in the document it automatically gone to RIS1 as the user and now I will go and check out and I will log in as RIS1 and now you can see he can check out the document and yes to all now I will make some no no not this component this one slider open this check out yes to all now I will do some changes here and once change is done I will check in this document using status as motion simulation check in this document now you can see the revision level is changed to John you see here uh, the second revision level which means modeling so in the second revision level if I check in this it is given as modeling once again it is changing to the John as the document this is how you can assign the lifecycle status for a 
component or for a project in the product lifecycle management. Look this video very carefully when you are assigning this rules for modeling, analysis and motion simulation. Remember you have to give access for these two projects everywhere and also you should give access here. And don't forget to check all the settings when you are practicing this lifecycle status. Since you had to be very clear with these rules, if you if you are not clear with these rules, definitely it is tough to explain. So go through this video specifically focused to understand this life cycle status, assigning life cycle status for the project. And this is useful if if you say uh, the part which is finished by John and need to go for the second analysis. Uh, if you select this life cycle status he will not have the access the next user will have the access he can use for the next process and this is all about giving life cycle status and next properties when you check in any document you can see we have only standard dialog box which is having only predefined settings like uh, owner project status node but i need to enter one more property called as cost go here new property make it as cost and click ok click ok here now if you check in here you can see there is a one more tab added here as cost and now you can enter the cost what you required and you can check in the document so once you assign the uh, life cycle status don't forget it has to be once again disabled so that you can understand the other concept otherwise everywhere it will be applied and you will be confused why it is given so understand when you want to enable and when you don't require this life cycle status and now well, let's see the other topic as assigning standard libraries assigning standard libraries which is very simple to understand when you require any standard parts like bolt nets everything everything will be retrieved from the toolbox so when you check in the assembly which is using the toolbox components you will make a copy in the local drive and you'll also make a copy in the server so this time you don't want to make this this mistakes so what you do you, you can give the path where the standard library is available if you given the path then the parts which is available in this folder assigned assigned folder you will not be able to check in the documents which will avoid the multiple copies this is all about doing standard libraries and assigning it and triggers will give you the advantage of using the notification and this is especially used to solve the problems specifically with history tracking and when you know the XML language you will be able to understand all these trackings and uh, this trigger will give you information the format of Excel XML which is once again understand by the user if you understand XML language you can understand clearly where the server got stuck and where the project file has lost and how can retrieve it and where it is modified and how we can uh, understand the customer properties where it is modified so it, it will give notification like bump revision check in create projects move document open pro document everything will be given very clearly in XML format now this is all about understanding triggers, adding libraries and adding properties and lifecycle status. To better to have a better idea about standard libraries, refer our activities given in the reference guide and also for the properties we are given specific activities. There are uh, nearly 5 activities in reference guide. Complete each activity with respect to objective understand the objective and go and do it so that you can have a clear idea about what you're going to do it because the activities given there is designed in such a way you will use uh, one command from here and other command from this tab so you will understand the objective and, and if you do it you'll be able to understand how this PDM can be used for the effective product data management it's all about product data management let's see the next interesting one creating photo realistic views PhotoWorks PhotoWorks application is based on the mental ray rendering, rendering engine and it is used to create realistic images out of the part model as you know 
when you show the model with one single color the customer will not be attracted and you have to show the component in a realistic way so that you will be able to sell the product and you will be able to reach the market so easily and in this slide also you can see the chain is shown with an photo realistic way so what exactly we are doing in photovax we are creating a photo realistic image and once again to make you understand it works on the mental ray rendering engine which is an effective engine for rendering which is most preferable in industry we'll start first with applying colors let's see how we can do this to use this we have separate add in called as photo studio go to solid works you can go to office products here you can choose photo works but in the new version it is given with the name as photo view 360 and now we are going to see with the application photo works in this model you can see this bulb is shown with one single color but previously it was showing in a two different colors let's see how we can apply this here you are able to see a color is given here that is for the entire solid body entire part but i need to apply it specifically for surfaces and specifically for solid bodies now this is one solid and for this i need to apply color you can choose from here the sweep body select appearance from here you can choose which type of metal texture you want to apply on this face here you can see we have different type of uh, materials available i will choose glass gloss and from here you can choose I like to have clear glass and click okay here now it is shown in the clear I'll, i will remove the sharp edges now you'll be able to see the glass but i don't require this color i'll make it as white go to first remove this appearance and uh, select from here and you need to select the body which you very want to apply this and when you are selecting it you have the advantage of applying on the uh, one single face or selected face i click okay here and i will hide this and this is this is how you can apply color for the entire part or for the specific bodies from this feature manager and apart from this when you are applying you will be able to use textures if i feel this solid body okay should be having with a different color select this once again appearances for the entire not for only for this body i will choose a texture from here i don't require this plastic i required from this uh, stone structure paving and select this and if you if you if you select this you can see the dynamic updates of the material stone bar and i need then whether this is how you can apply the textures and you can see the effect immediately on the screen granite marble from this which type of marble you need i need dark marble you required so what whatever you need you can apply on this or moreover you can do it in this way also i will create a flat sheet and let's see how we can apply for this i will take this uh, top plane and i'll have offset to a distance uh, reverse and here i will make a sketch on this plane go to this plane and make a sketch make a small circle of this diameter and this should be planar face once i complete i will apply for the surface go to this appearance now you can choose which type of texture you would like to apply here mesh you can apply this this will be shown a difference in the rendering process okay now you will not be able to see this still you can go to mapping you can, you can say which type of mapping you required you can say mapping and i would like to rotate this you can rotate your rotation which type of rotation you required you can select the reference 
z axis and I'll play this on this one. Remove this to get here. Once you placed it, you can see the rendering effect. Once you render that, you can see the effect on this. Click OK here. Now I'll go and say for Office products. Now you can see in the preview window instead of doing the whole rendering process we can see in the preview window so that we can avoid the time consumed in this since if you go and do the uh, whole process using a, a, a render it will take some time to process let's see how it, it, it shows that effect now it is uh, taking the textures what we applied there for the base sheet that is surface and you are seeing the real time effect of the texture on the part is computing entirely whatever the texture we are applied but we applied white color but it is showing in different way the reason is the background and the shadow and the different options what we set for photo works is different and accordingly it behaves you can change this once again go to the uh, photo works uh, rendering manager tab here you can see appearances here i don't require this appearance i will detach this i don't require all these appearances detach i require appearance only for this surface or which type of light you required L let us see the preview window once again what will be the effect if i remove all this you can see the effect of this part without applying any color now we will go and apply the color for the specific region let's see how this work out sweep part where is the sweep this is the portion i want to apply color i will go and choose a color from here medium gloss i choose this one and i'll click ok here and now let's see the preview window how it works we'll make this to be enlarge and you can pan and you can see the i'll keep it in the middle and now it is once again rendering the image so this preview window once again it is uh, most efficient one which will show the uh, exact preview before you take the print of the same image click ok now you want to control the shadows you can control the shadows uh, from this screenery go right click uh, right click here and uh, scenery here you can apply right now it is backdrop studio room you can go and say rooms okay let's, let's see one thing i'll make it as a preview window here let's see the dynamic uh, update of this we don't require the uh, lighting shadow go to shadow here right now it is uh, calculating transparent shadow whatever we required we can close we can apply here i don't require no shadow apply now you can see shadow will be removed from this part no not yet so what we need to do is uh, this is global shadow control we'll go and say environment in this environment we need to change here we have select environment image i will use no environment i'll apply now we'll not find any textures on the uh, model but as far as light it is not shown bright so what we'll do is use uh, select environment grow and browse from here which type of environment you need so that you can all white studio click open here now we'll be able to see the difference once this environment is applied because environment has different type of uh, light settings and different lights if you if you don't require the lights you can once again choose lighting scheme from here which type of lighting you require you can choose from here i required this type of lighting i'll go for dim light Okay, apply and once you do this once again go to background I'll choose from here the other background lighting now it is in the process I will go and choose 
the background spotlight background odds use uh, studio cube map open and apply now we'll be able to see the effect of the environment what we chosen and uh, let's go to the room if you require you can show the room if required by selecting this uh, visible areas but once you desired to see this definitely you should understand the studios studios available here you can go to studios and you can see some predefined uh, lights floor everything will available i will go and choose uh, this is wood floor and i will apply this now we'll be able to see the difference once it is updated you can rotate the component and you can see the difference there now we can see the difference of this part which is placed on the floor and once again you can see which type of format i need garage apply but when you are doing photo works there is one more thing you need to understand it should be uh, in the perspective view i'll go to the perspective view i'll minimize this or close this let's see the perspective view I'll close this once again and here we have perspective and uh, go to the preview window here you'll be able to see once again the same thing but you can see the the garage room what you selected according to the uh, first i will minimize the room and here i like to see this this is how you can apply the textures and you can apply the rooms and you can see the real time effect on the part now let's see how can we uh, render only specified window i go here the, we have the command all the commands will be here render area if you choose this only this area will be shown with the realistic effect and you want to save the images go to photo works you have render last the last area which you specify that will be rendered render selection if you select this body only that body will be rendered now we'll stop this i'll say this part photo works render selection i'll be able to see only that part will be shown with the rendering effect photo works render to uh, file if you use render to file then you will be saved in a separate file here you can see background which is saving a default one you can also schedule the time if required to render it automatically and once you complete you can attach the other things like uh, decal let's see what is this decal and uh, if you look into this we have the advantage of adding light also to add lights go to edit a view light and cameras here you can see direction light you want to apply you can apply this you can control the color of the light using this one click okay here if required i can add this light i don't require this light delete this or we can hide out this or let's let's let it on this we go to view light cameras properties or delete which light direction one or direction one uh, direction three i should edit it i should also chop the direction three i think direction four no which light we switch on i don't know okay let's see uh, how this work out go and hide the sketches and uh, I'll close the file once again open so that i can easily take the advantage of removing all the default settings now let's see how we can apply the company logos 
go to photo works we have here uh, decal and uh, what type of logo you need i require solidworks logo on which surface mapping select the specific surface this surface and you can see it is applied you can control this using this dialog box from here you can control from here this plane using this plane you can control it you want to rotate you can rotate using this one once again how you want to rotate this where you want to place and how you want to rotate this which degree and when you are placing it uh, you have the advantage of using mapping which type of mapping cylindrical projection spherical and fixed aspect ratio fit width to selection illumination image what image you want to place and you can also make image mask file and every, everything you can do it here using make it a zero degree no, it is not I'll make this to be 368 degree and now it is placed this is how you can place decal on the face applying background we had seen in the sceneries here you can uh, right click and go to scenery from here you can change the background this is what background this this effect when you change any of the background you can see the effect in the final render image applying materials decal setting up of camera go to view uh, lights cameras here you add add camera and target you can place where you want to locate i would like to target this surface it's there already it is targeted here and target on this surface and camera position i will position using this uh, this surface and now let's go and tilt this we'll see how this will work out okay i'll click okay here position make it as zero or oh, let's see uh, we'll fix a camera let's see how the walkthrough can be created sketch in this uh, top plane not top plane sketch uh, top plane and here i will create an arc or we'll create a circle now we will make an arc so that we can reverse it if required circle second point and now let's go to the view lights and cameras add camera target is here and camera position is using this one and now i will place it here make it as zero looking in this direction click ok once you complete it go to animation and you enable this uh, one and also you should see in the camera view i will right click camera view and the camera view should be locked what i can do is uh, camera view and here we have cameras and here i will say lock camera camera view everything is selected and now what i will do i will move this uh, camera from one location other location and now what i will do i will double click the camera position and i will say it should move from uh, 0 to 100 and click ok now once again you you play this now you can see the whatever the movement we did it is right now behaving as of we are doing a walkthrough so here we had kept a wire path which is a uh, path for the camera to travel and we are seeing the entire thing using this animation this is this is how you can create walkthrough using solidworks same you can uh, save uh, as an animation file and uh, you can play it as a separate video 
this is this is how you can create walkthrough effect by using cameras and this path and in SOLIDWORKS 2012 version you will be using not photoworks photo view 360 and also you have a separate application called photo view 360 which will give you the advantage of uh, creating the realtic images so dynamically and also in a easier and fastest way and that's what all about photoworks practice the activities given in the reference guide to understand the photoworks and uh, modify each and everything available in the photoworks to understand how the effect is shown and uh, the last one we, we should not forget to follow this complete the activities given in the reference guide with respect to pdm photoworks and weldment and also don't forget when you go with pdm and photoworks understand the objective and what you are going to do in the inside activity this is common for i'm saying about solidworks pdm buildment photoworks these three chapters will be given with respect to the activities and there you need to concentrate on the objective and the concept behind us and why we are doing it and what is the application example for each and every command that's all about solidworks i hope definitely this training will make you understand the tools and commands to use in solidworks once you go through all the commands and if you practice the process given in the project workbook definitely i'm sure you will be the most proficient user of solid work thank you to give you an idea about loft and swept command in part modeling i will be explaining the commands involved in creating this wedge and the approach involved in creating this wedge component and also the handle of ice cream scoop. Let's see how we can create this. Now this is the wedge part. So what is the first thing I had did? I created planes at different levels as per the dimension given in the project workbook. Once it is completed, I had used loft command and blended these two sections one is having 30 mm as length for the square and other is having a rectangle of size 0 0.250 width and length of 75 mm these two are lofted to form the first feature the next feature you can see i created circle of diameter 41 and another circle of diameter 42 and another circle of diameter 26 so these three are blended to form this shape you can see here we had used three sketches and finally this edge is once again used to create this loft this is how we can create this wedge component now let's see how can we create ice cream scoop handle here you can see the first step involved is we have a sketch which is created as per dimension given in your project workbook and we had applied material of thickness how much of thickness let's see in the dialog box 2 mm so once this thickness is defined next we will be creating a plane and there is a line segment which is defining as the path now we will go and create a sketch that is ellipse of size 20 mm the minor axis and the major axis you can see it will be created later because anyway the end will be defined by using this guide curve so we created this elliptical shape and this guide curve as per dimension given in your book so we can create this entire spline and using sweep command we will select the first uh, elliptical shape what we drawn at this end and this is the open guide curve and apart from that we need to use you can see here the, the open group 3 and there are 1 and 2 so this middle line middle we have one more line segment and that will be used as the 
this this sketch phi is used as the path so once it's completed okay I cancel this because a wrong selection now so with the help of this guide curve and there is a one more sketch which is supporting this swept feature after applying this after creating this let's go and apply dome at the end by selecting the edge and we can apply the distance of 7 mm and you can see the creation of smooth edge on the on this end once it is completed as usual we can apply fillet on the sharp edges this is how we can create the handle using sweep command and dome applied on it now let's see the other component creation in SOLIDWORKS bottle this is an oil can bottle let's see how it is created so the first basic it starts from extrude I'll roll out this here and the basis we created and sketch with fillet on the edges the second we created a plane with an offset distance of 46 mm and next we created one more extrude on this on this plane and using loft we had blended these two faces which means we had selected this edge this this edge as the this face and the bottom face for blending and after this we had applied one more extrude feature on this and we applied fillet on the bottom faces so once it's completed we had used extrude cut to create this feature on the faces so for this we have parameters given in the drawing sheet as per that we can create it and next there is a one more sketch creation is required which is used in the later feature uh, patterning and the next is shell applying uh, applying thickness that is the whole solid object is converted into some thickness and once this completed we created a basic design like this a small extrude feature on this face and and this we apply dome it is uh, creating like this uh, projection on the surface like how you can see in the uh, calculators mobiles and next by using circular pattern no by using curve pattern we will uh, array this created based on the sketch we drawn earlier using this elliptical as the path we had created pattern around it so once this is done we will mirror on the other side and the next one more feature we will create that is another extrude on this face and this will be filled once again with a dome and using fill pattern we will apply a we will just fill on the entire face and you can see the the easiest way of filling this on the on the on the surface this is how you can see the SOLIDWORKS is user friendly in applying and creating the consumer product design so easy with simple tools so once this is done the other side is also mirrored and here you can see another sweep command is used to create thread on this face so to create this sweep I hope you know that first we'll create an helical helix curve and at the end of this we will create a triangular shape like this and we can sweep this this is all about creating pot modeling commands using sweep and loft in this video you are going to see the creation of iPhone cover using surface tools available in SOLIDWORKS environment and as you know that part modeling is a different approach and surface modeling is a different approach so now I hope this will give you an understanding and better uh, view on creating a surface model using limited tools available in SOLIDWORKS so first understand the different details given in the sheet here you can see a detailed view is given and this is shown in this area detail A scale 5 is to 1 so now that sketch is created initially in the front plane you can see the dimensions given over here I just given an approximate value here and this value is rounded off here 
so once you create this there are some dimensions which you can assume so that you will get the shape exactly how we require this so now once you complete the sketch we need to create additional plane before that we need to extrude this to some distance symmetrically on the both the plane the extrude depth is given here 53.68 so here you can assume how much you want to give the round of value so once this is completed you can create a plane exactly coinciding on this edge and that plane you create and sketch like this arc exactly coinciding with this arc in this side so based on that you can see there is an arc created and now ap apart from this there is a one more path we require to guide this profile so I created uh, one more plane or we can create we can take this even top plane and there we can create this guide path so once you complete this go to surface tool and here you have swept surface my profile is this and path is this now right click this to accept this surface generation so once this is completed now we need to close this bottom surface so go to fill surface here we have the edges to choose as the selection we'll choose all the edges which is having continuation so I'll select all the edges and now what I will do is I can choose either contact or I can choose tangency or curvature as the surface finish here I will use tangency as my uh, entire continuity and I'll click OK here so now the bottom surface is created without much of complication steps complicated steps the next we need to have this on the other side so for this we don't want to uh, do once again we can replicate this go and choose mirror and here I can choose mirror plane as uh, this front plane and faces to mirror I will choose this face and this face I'll choose once again this face okay remove this I'll choose uh, okay, bodies to mirror I'll check this face and this face click OK now you can see the other side is created and to apply thickness to this material first this should be a single surface that is single sheet for this I'll go to command surface knit and I will choose this surface this and all the surfaces are connected and just click OK here to create so thickness is added now we can go and choose the command insert feature and thicken thicken command is ok I need to choose from here ok I will enjoy, enlarge the uh, interface so that I can choose the thicken command enlarge this surface tool here we have thicken command I hope we can get from here thicken yes so here I will use thicken and select this entire face and thickness is 0.5 mm I'll click OK here now the entire model is created once it is created we can hide the unwanted sheets here we don't require the sheets so we can hide the sheets which we don't require here you can choose or we can just leave as it is the display how it shows so now you can see the phone is created now you can use uh, our uh, display manager module here you can go and apply the colors by choosing add appearance and here using this appearance command we can apply the colors on this so here I'll go and say appearance here which color you required plastic or better we can go and choose uh, from here I want to apply color and uh, here we need to say not the whole design only the surfaces sheets I want to apply so I can choose this sheet and I can apply color so these are the sheets I would like to apply color faces this face and uh, and and on this face also required so what I will do at this face but here if you see uh, we, we are able to apply only on this sheet if you want to really make on this sheet also we need to first 
split this into two different faces then you can thicken this or we can use a datum plane uh, here and we can go and say uh, split uh, and then I need to say intersection these curve these faces and now that face can be used to apply the colors how we required now I'll click OK here and also we required OK this side is created click OK now I'll go and say appearance and now let's see how we can apply this faces the same black color not entire thing I'll leave as it is and now we'll go and say uh, this color faces I want to apply on this face okay what we will do is we'll remove the entire thing and we'll apply as a fresh piece I'll go to I'll go to appearance <coughs> here I will I will remove this area and I'll say faces uh, we need to apply face on this face and uh, color is this color and this face this this and the, all the faces we can see the required color can be applied here and now once this is completed you can go and choose the shaded in more and we can make it as uh, sharp edges to be not shown and we can see the cover is ready for display this is how we can create a surface model using limited commands but smartly you can design the iPhone cover in this video we are going to see how this helmet designed using surface tool here I created already the profile guide curve sketches required for this helmet design let's see the dimensions applied for this sketches and what are the entities used to create this here if you see I chosen a plane and I created this profile first using a spline and and I applied a tangential constraint so that here you will have a smooth transition between this vertical arrow and this same profile is created on the other side and I applied dimensions between these points so once this is done I gone and once this finished we will create the next set of sketches here you can see another profile using the same spline command here this is a spline and here you can see this is an arc so the entire arc is created and the dimensions whatever it is given here the same it is applied here to create this so once this is created I click OK here and now we create another datum plane here at the end of this curve plane is created at the end of this curve and on this curve we created another ellipse by using spline command by using spline command we will be creating another ellipse by passing through these points and the points is dimensioned with 124 and 103 spacing and once you complete this we will be creating a datum plane another datum plane this is for different purpose let's see later and here there is a sketch I created so what I will do is uh, once you create first second third and we need to create another profile for trimming the surface created to start with uh, what we'll do is we will use loft command I'll go for loft to create this geometry the profile I will use selection manager and I will say the first profile is this oh, yeah profile is this and the guide curve is the bottom one profile is this one and second thing second profile and third we have and fourth we have yeah so once this is done the next thing is we need to apply a guide here and after this I will use close loft and I will say the geometry will be created 
based on the four guide curves you can see here so give done here and now we need to trim the un unrequired faces we trim the uh, I mean, we don't we don't require these bottom faces so I'll go and say trim I'll use trim surface and here the trim tool is this and the remove what we want to do is the bottom face and this face I want to remove so now we had removed this and I also hide it and now next thing what we need to do is here we need an profile to create and there we want to finish this area right so what we will do is I will use a plane which is available on this and I will say feature and insert geometry now what I will do I will just extend the window and now here I will say which side we used to create okay now this side I will take not the back side there is a front side I would like to take so front plane here uh, the front plane I need to choose uh, this plane should exactly pass on this point okay so once you create this go and create one more sketch here which will say the profile for the front geometry to create this is the geometry front geometry and okay three point hook from here and to end here we need to choose we need to create roughly then we align it this point and this one should pierce I mean we have to apply pierce constraint and I will remove I will apply I will reduce this and I will say this and this should have pierce constraint once again I think it has applied there both the sides we can see if you want to see the constraints applied you can go to view sketch relations I'm, I'm going to leave as it is without dimension and now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one more plane okay and uh, this plane I will just create a sketch here get a sketch here and that will be used to trim the unwanted area from here to here from this point to this point Okay. and I will say this point now using this I am going to trim so I will go to surface trim using this uh, tool remove this area okay the reason is it was not properly coincide with the sketch what we require so I delete this now I'll hide this plane also and I'll create one more plane offsetting from here reverse the direction and I'll in increase the space and I'll keep it over here click OK and here I'm going to sketch the side yes and I'll say the uh, arc has to be created exactly from here to here and I click OK here now trim surface trim remove this area now I can see this the, the phase is removed now using this we can fill using fill surface command this is the area I want to fill and see just create an approximate geometry here I didn't mean with the same geometry here but I'm just showing you an example how can we create this but still you can see here uh, there is a one more uh, phase we need to remove so we'll go to uh, trim and here I will say another phase should also be removed so remove this area also now almost we completed this and we can use the other additional uh, additional advanced command to make impression same on this face to show this one example I'll go and say add material for this and extrude up to here let's see in the uh, 
front view we make it as here 50 and here I will make it view first I will we want to place it in one view so that we can understand exactly up to here I want to extend once it is added now what I'm going to do is using this I'm going to impress I'm going to press I'm going to make an emboss shape so for this I'll go and say deform here I will use surface push this is the direction is I will use uh, top plane and deform region is this and uh, the area the, the, the area which I would like to make here now it is just computing the whole thing and here I will say select body and the inside body is the selection now let's see in the front view it is computing actually right now we just see in the front view so that we can get exact idea how it is modified so now I'll do move this move to some distance here and now we can apply the apply some value so that you'll be able to see the difference there now I'm just dragging it but uh, the geometry is not supporting it let's see how it will give us a result so once it is uh, moved now yeah we mostly had moved it now this value will make it as 50 now it is computing okay now we need to move this this should be once again 10 and I need to move this to some distance so that the impress that that punch shape can be made there we'll move to some distance outside all right I can see I just moved it and click OK here now you can see the solid is pressed embossed on the top of the head still if you make uh, the parameter uh, like the distance of uh, the body here here it is 10 still if you modify it you will be able to see the shape exactly what you required there I'll make it as 5 now you can see the difference in the geometry created on the face now click OK here and now we'll accept this and let's see the difference there now 5mm we had input we have we had given input of 5mm but if you see the geometry created it is different so you, you can see I'm, I'm just explaining you how the shape is used to impose on the sheet by using advanced command available in SOLIDWORKS so now if you move this body still in the uh, down direction and the distance is uh, optimized you can see exactly the shape will be embossed as per requirement here I don't require this much I'll just move downwards and I leave the shape then you can see the optimized shape what we require there now it's, it is moved only 2 point up to 2.17 still we need to move here just moving it down di downward direction and now once it is completed here I don't require 5 mm I'll make it as 10 mm so that the shape will not have that much difference here so 10 mm and still make it as 20 mm okay now click OK here now you will be able to see at least optimize the shape okay it doesn't have any difference okay. now you, you, can, you can just practice by applying some values and you can see how uh, this face will have exact emboss shape on the face this is only you to have an idea on the advanced tool how you can use to get the exact consumer product design using SOLIDWORKS environment In the project workbook, we have four surface modeling exercises. One is iPhone cover, and second mouse design, and third helmet, and the fourth is bottle design. The mouse design, you will be exploring it, and you will find the smartest way of creating it. To assist you to create uh, the bottle, I'll show you the approach and the tool used to create the whole design. 
So initially you can see the all the details given here the same it is used to create these sketches at different level. You can see here these dimensions are given in your project workbook and using that you can see in the bottom 220 the same it is given here 220 200 this this dimension is used here and uh, the sketches are different level created and using surface loft command these sketches are blended and here you can see there are two guide curves which you need to create so once you create it you can see the surface model of the bottle that is the half half of this then you need to trim the unwanted area here here I will draw a sketch like this and this sketch will be used to trim the this area and once it is finished we will go and create the four boundaries joining between the sketch and this surface as an example I'll just select this and I'll show you how this is created you can see first edge on this side and the second edge on this line segment similarly we have created these walls that is these sheets and, and after this we had created the other half and we had finally joined all the surfaces into one sheet and now what I will do at this phases I will hide it and now I'll go and select fillet on these edges and once again fillet on the other edges and next I'll create one more plane so this plane will be used for creating another loft on the top surface you can see here the other sketch I had created and this sketch and this edge is uh, between these two we had created and loft you can just go and see the loft how it is created I'm just selecting the top uh, uh, top edge and this edge by selecting these two you'll be creating a loft then I will use surface fill so surface fill is used and we had filled this bottom face bottom surface and once again uh, all these surfaces are connected and we had given some thickness to this and finally we will remove all the sharp edges using fillet command so here we have fillet and now you can see the complete bottle created using the surface tools